I am joined here on the sofa by a star of YouTube, someone everyone wants to meet, a real celebrity. But Keith, b before we talk to you, <laughs> yeah, okay. I want to also talk to Charlie McDonnell, Hello. another star of YouTube, a vlogger, a filmmaker, and if you watch YouTube videos, you know who this guy is. I've been around a while. You have been around yeah. a while. <laughs> and if you watch YouTube videos, there's something else you know, and that is that Charlie loves tea. We have tea. We don't just have tea, this isn't just for show. We are actually in sort of the tea room at the Royal Society. This is the fellows room where fellows of the Royal Society come to drink tea before they go and talk about science and have their important meetings. Do you know what, there are no fellows in here at the moment, Keith. I've never seen any fellows here in the room. Do they come in here often? They, they, they do come in often, yeah, usually in, in, in groups when something's going on. So we're having a quiet day today, but okay. you will see Nobel Prize winners knocking around this room. Yeah. I feel very out of place, yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to be here. Yeah, so, <laughs> so do we, don't worry. Okay, now, we're going to talk to you about tea today. I've set a challenge for Keith to find tea in the archives, and I don't know how difficult that's going to be, but we're going to go down to the archives in search of tea. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Before we do, how is Keith's tea? It's pretty good. Is it? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Not bad at good. all. All right, Charlie. Here's the first one. We're going to L3. Leo and Hook. Right? Leo, Leo and Hook. Leo and Hook. Let's ask the professional. Le Leven Hook. Leven Hook. Leven Hook. With apologies to our Dutch viewers. Yes. Now, Leven Hook is a bit of a legend in the world of microscopy. He's like Mr. Microscope of his time. I don't know if that's what it says on his tombstone, but Mr. Microscope would <laughs> would, would probably do. That was his TV show, Mr. That was <laughs> Microscope. That, if he had a YouTube channel, that, that would be it. Now, Charlie, take your glove off, because what we do, this, this, this gets people upset because you actually don't wear gloves when you're handling paper. Oh, okay. We want to find 46, so just really gently turn these pages. Letter. <laughs> Helpful. <laughs> There's a bookmark. So we have here a letter written by Leeuwenhoek. It was written to John Chamberlain. Who was John Chamberlain? Uh, do you know? I've no idea. He was just some dude. Mm -hmm. All right. So, <laughs> so Leeuwenhoek has written to John Chamberlain on the 8th of December, 1702. That just must have taken ages to write. Look uh -huh. at the kind of amazing precision. That is not just a childish scroll at all. Yeah. You want to be taken seriously when you're writing like that. So this is where Leeuwenhoek is talking about how to treat your teeth uh, and what is good and bad for them. So he begins by describing how you might brush your teeth or rather rub the gums uh, with a very particular thing. The rubbing of the gums, in my opinion, ought to be repeated at least three times a day. And if young people were to take care to rub their teeth and gums every morning, we should not see so many toothless people. Rub your teeth, everyone. Rub your teeth <laughs> three times a day. Rub your teeth with tobacco ash. That was what he was using. Tobacco oh. ash was the, was the choice. And if the warmth of tea and coffee be hurtful at all, it would be most hurtful to the lips, which are first affected with it. So he's saying that if you drink tea, burn your lips, it would be the lips that were affected rather than the teeth. This is the preeminent scientist of the time. So they're saying about heat more than anything else, right? Yeah, okay. so in short, our blood is a friend to warmth, but an enemy to cold. So drinking warm tea is, is not bad for your teeth. So there we go, we found scientists talking to each other about tea. <laughs> That's that's our first that's our first effort. Well, thank you. It's very all right. Much. Yeah, it was fun. No, no Leeuwenhoek's a big deal, you know. Like yeah, I'm sure this he is. is like this is like one of the most famous scientists ever, talking about the same, but making the astute observation that tea can burn your lip. Mr. Microscope for you. I reckon we want that one next, don't we? Yeah, once we want that's that away. We haven't seen this yet. I haven't seen this yet. So oh, this, okay. This could be amazing. Could be even more amazing than that. It's just going to be just pressed tea bags or something. That would be, that would be amazing. <laughs> tea flower. Oh, that's a it's tea a, flower. it is a tea flower. Well, tea is, it's made with the leaves, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's right. And the type of tea depends on how long you've left it out, basically, oh. if I remember rightly. Many of the illustrations in this volume are 
the original drawings for things that went into the philosophical transactions as engraved plates, but not all of them. So you can see this one below certainly was in the Filtrans, but not everything is in there. So stray illustrations were pasted into the scrapbook. We've got one more for you. Okay. All right. So we've shown you tea and text. We've shown you a picture that is tea related. We've got, we've got our finale now. Okay. All right. Okay, Charlie, these are the papers of Charles, a namesake, oh. Charles Blagden, who was a secretary of the Royal Society. One of the top experts on Blagden, who's working at the Royal Society at the moment, was here a few hours ago. She has now left <laughs> and is no use to us whatsoever, <laughs> so, so, so we're flying blind. Blagden Collection. Miscellaneous matter unclassified. Mostly drafts and copies of letters. This top one, Keith? Yeah. That's so all. I'm going to take this top one out, but we want to see this. This is not a brilliant filming space, but it has brilliant stuff in it. Let's okay. test your handwriting skills. So I can see tea leaves. Is that right? Th or two leaves? Two leaves? Two leaves of... Two leaves? Of green tea. Of... What does that say? I don't know. So two leaves of bow here, mm -hmm. one of green tea from oh. Gordon's Garden. Gordon's mm. Garden. All right, here we go. Being careful not to drop anything, Brady. Oh, okay. Tea leaves from Gordon's garden. <laughs> so the, the larger one of those would be green tea. Wow. I mean, I've got to be honest, when I suggested doing tea, I didn't expect you to actually find tea in, in, like in a book. <laughs> of course, <laughs> they're, they're, you never know what treasures await you yeah. here at the Royal Society. So, so how old is this tea then? 1800s at oh, yeah. least. Wow. That is really old, old tea. So... Um, am I allowed to taste it or...? No, afraid no, not. No. no, you get in very hot water that way. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brady. <laughs> so here we have many, many, you can see layer after layer of what appear to be basically well, microscope slides. That's exactly what they are. And you can see that they're tissue samples. They've been stained so that you can examine them under the microscope. And these particular ones were donated to the society by the family of Commander Dammon. So these are originals uh, from his researches into decompression. So this is the chief diver, one of those mm. three men who was doing this research. Yeah. These are his slides of, well, bits of tissue that have had compression and decompression tests done on them. And which, right. and which was part of this sort of really important moment when they made these tables. 